I'm gonna share some amazing secrets so we can deep clean and spring clean our house in a fraction of the time. I grew up in a house where cleaning was like an all week affair. It was insane. My mom would wash the floors on her hands and knees because she said if something's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And I've learned over the years that that level just isn't necessary. Like I cheat and take shortcuts and save time, but I get the same results. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. All these little ways that we can hack and take the shortcuts and still have the exact same level of clean. A quick tip to save a ton of time when cleaning your fridge is to use a box or a laundry hamper and go shelf by shelf, take everything out and just put it in the box. That way you don't have to walk back and forth taking one item at a time and setting it on the counter. This actually saves you a ton of time. And once you've taken everything off of one shelf, go ahead and grab some cloths and get them really warm. Just not boiling. You don't wanna like crack the glass, but you want them to be pretty hot lay them out to soften any of that goo that's on your fridge shelf. Let them sit on there for just a few seconds while you go through the box, declutter any food that you don't wanna put back in the fridge. And by the time you're done that, now you just need to wipe this out for a perfectly clean fridge shelf. Cleaning my oven used to take for freaking ever. And I think that was because I was using way too much product and even harsh chemicals. So here's the secret that I found. Either baking soda or going with the pink stuff and using a dry sponge, not a wet sponge. That's just really gonna give you more abrasion. So you can either sprinkle a little bit, not a lot of baking soda. And then just to moisten it, I use a little bit of like Dawn, a little bit, Dawn dish soap or go ahead with the pink stuff that has some like moisture with it and that's it. Just like scrub in circles, get that stuff off and then use a damp cloth to rinse it after. I feel like less is more is the secret here and a dry sponge and dry cleaning products is that abrasion that really gives you fast results. I'm not even gonna take the racks out. We're full lazy cleaning this oven today. So smiley now. It's okay. All right, let's rinse this. My oven's clean in under five minutes and I didn't even break a sweat. Literally the most important thing you should clean during spring cleaning is your cleaners. Does this make sense? So like the dishwasher, the washing machine, your vacuum, all that stuff. But the dishwasher is super important, but the place you want to really focus on, you could just run it empty with some vinegar, but make sure you clean the seal. Not only is this where 90% of the odors come from, but it's gonna make your dishwasher quieter when you clean the seal. So like right all around the edges, I'm just gonna use a little bit of dish soap. Don't put a lot of dish soap in your dishwasher or it's Sud Central, friends. A little bit of dish soap and really focus on the seals. That's gross. That's so moldy. Ew, what are you? Ew, it is far delicious. Not too much soap, it's gonna be like an avalanche of suds. And once you've wiped all the seals, make sure you go ahead and clean your filter. This is so bad. Mm. Yummy. Is it full of mushroom? That was surprisingly super freaking disgusting, which makes me think like how clean have my dishes been? I'm gonna pour in a cup of vinegar. I'm gonna put some in here and some in the bottom and just run this on really hot and give it a good clean. Gross. 
I told you this video was going to be all about shortcuts and listen, cleaning your cleaners is a shortcut because it's going to just like mean you don't have to rewash dirty dishes in your dishwasher or have your clothes have that skank smell that you have to rewash. So we are doing a quick clean to the washing machine. The front of your front loader is going to have like this little thing here. You're going to pop that out and you're going to pull the drain and you're going to let out all this skanky water drain and also you are going to pull out the filter guys brace yourselves if your washer ever skanky stinks it's probably the filter oh there's just a hairball it's it's a leaking though Ooh, it smells it is a stinky oh gag It smells right. <coughs> Clean your filters. I wish you had smell a vision to really understand. This is why your washing machine sometimes has that funk. It's because this hasn't been cleaned. Oh, it's so smelly. It's gagalicious over here. Okay, that was that was fun. Just a quick little scoochies, scoochies. Make sure you plug this, man. If you forget to replug this thing, it's gonna be water on the floor. Make sure you plug it. And that's it. Okay, let's clean the seal. My seal's not too bad, but I just use a little dish soap and uh, get in the seal and give it a quick wipe. And I always find, you know what I find? Is weird stuff right down here. Like confetti and hairballs. All of which is going to make your clothes not as clean and smell a little skanky. Wipe in the seal. This feels oddly weird. Another little hairball. And we're done. This is totally not necessary, but I'm just gonna finish with like a quick tub washer. You know, it's like a little washing machine washer. You do not have to do this. I just happen to have some on hand. Instead of using one of these, throw in a cup of vinegar. Actually, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna like, it's extreme overkill. A cup of vinegar and I'm gonna put it right in that seal and then also in the drum and just wash it like I would wash clothes and that's it that's like easy peasy lemon squeezy you've washed your washer if you do nothing else after watching this video please clean your dryer like this because this could literally save your life we all clean our lint traps right but here's something that you might not know that's actually really surprising oh obviously I don't clean this enough <laughs> if you use fabric softener or you use any type of dryer sheets there's actually an invisible film that can be trapped in this filter that can stop airflow and cause fires so not only are we going to vacuum this all out inside to make sure we're getting everything but we're actually going to wash this with soap and water to remove that invisible film and make sure you never have a dryer fire. See how the water's pooling? See how it's not draining through? Can you guys see that? So like there's water in here, this is mesh, but the water's not going through. That's because this mesh is actually clogged with residue, which is stopping my clothes from drying as fast. But more than that, it's a total fire hazard. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like if water isn't dripping, you got an issue. So let's clean that. I'm not even done, but you can see the water's no longer pooling, right? Just from that little bit, the water's now going right through, which means the air's gonna go right through too. So I'm just gonna let this drip dry. If you do nothing else this video, not only will cleaning this dryer vent half the amount of time that it takes to dry your clothes, but it could just save your life. I watch a lot of videos on spring cleaning and cleaning hacks and people are still washing their walls with like a bucket of water. Don't do it friends. Not only is it super time consuming, but it can actually leave your walls streaky and looking worse. Instead, you just wanna dust them. You can get any kind of dusting wand. I like a Swiffer. 
this is just another one that's like extendable and you want to knock all the dust down get the cobwebs in the corner and then just like dust the walls if you don't have a duster like this totally fine don't buy one grab a broom and a big fluffy towel or cloth and just use a hair elastic to kind of wrap it around the top and then dust your walls with this except the hair elastic isn't gonna I'm gonna go from the bottom. Get it, girl. Get it. Like this. Boom, Bob, your uncle. So once you've dusted, if you find fingerprints or scuffs or goo on the wall, don't use a magic eraser, man. It can take the paint off. Instead, go with a clean cloth not one that has color though. You don't want like a dark blue or a dark red because you can actually transfer the dye from the cloth on your wall. So something with not color and a little dish soap and then just buff the areas where you have fingerprints or scuffs and that's all you need to do. Okay, let's quickly talk about baseboards. You have to dry dust your baseboards before you go in with a wet or damp cloth or else you're gonna create a hairy paste and it's not great. So quickly, we're just like, Without bending, you can just dust off the baseboard. Then, instead of getting on your hands and knees, wrap a broom with a cloth just like this. I'm gonna use a little bit of dish soap on it. And this is hands down the best baseboard cleaner I've ever tried because the broom's like big and thick. So it's getting into all those little crevices, but you don't have to bend. You're just like walking around your house swiping and swooshing, man, cleaning your baseboards in seconds. But remember, dry dust, then wet dust. Under furniture. Nobody's got time to move the furniture, plus my back, my sciatica. No, thank you very much. But honestly, most vacuums and brooms like aren't gonna fit underneath. So what do you do? If you have hardwood floors, like no carpet, use a duster, a duster wand that's nice and flat and just, oh look at ping pong balls, dust, just like scoop everything out and then vacuum what you get out. Oh, there's so much coming out. But listen, if you have carpet, this isn't gonna work. This is gonna do nothing. This actually got a ton of stuff out. Okay, so here's what you do. You want to, it's pretty crazy, grab some of these, they're called paper towel rolls, and stick it on the end of your vacuum. You can tape it, you can whatever, you can put like four together if it's really deep back. And this is why this works because you can squish this down so it fits into any crack and crevice. This is actually pretty amazeballs for like beside your fridge, beside your stove, any little spot. Literally crunch it down, guys, to create this little like, you know, flatness and get vacuuming if my vacuum worked, but it's broken, but that's because the battery. Here we go. Yeah, get it, girl. Get it, get it, get it, paper towel. Amazing. We gotta talk about windows. Nobody wants to clean their windows, but it is the one thing that you can do this spring that will make the biggest difference on how bright and how clean your house looks. The quickest way to clean outdoor windows used to be the Windex pad cleaner that you used with a hose, but they don't make it anymore. So the second fastest way to do your outdoor windows is with a double head squeegee just like this. They sell them at the dollar store. You wanna fill a bucket with hot water, two or three cups of vinegar, and a little bit of dish soap, and that's it. Dip in your squeegee head and with the sponge side, you want to rub it all over the outside of the window and then just squeegee the water away. This is exactly what professionals use and it's honestly crazy super fast.
When it comes to cleaning the inside of windows, hands down, the best thing to use is a foaming glass cleaner. It doesn't matter what kind it is, it's all the same. Foaming glass cleaner and either newspaper, which I don't have, coffee filters, which I don't have, or a really like tight knit kind of microfiber t-shirt material so there's no lint. Don't use paper towels, friends. You're gonna get streaks for days. And you can start by going in one direction, like back and forth, and then finish with up down for a perfectly streak-free window every time. Ba, 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 ba. We gotta talk about screens. When I was a kid, we used to take all the screens out, take them outside with the hose, scrub them with scrub brushes for hours. It was bonkers. And then when I grew up, I used to soak them in the bathtub or put them in the shower and scrub them. Still took forever. You don't need to do that. Listen, get a really soft, fluffy, either hand towel or cloth and get it soaked with like, again, water and vinegar and a little bit of dish soap and that's it and you just want to rub it on the screen don't even take it down the fluffiness actually like goes through the little holes in the screen and cleans both sides friends we don't have to work harder we can work smarter and it's the perfect way to get dirt and gross stuff off your screens except that is most definitely bird poop it's gonna stay there can i just reach my hand in can we cheat for the bird poop boop, bird poop boop yes winning it life winning it life that screen is clean da, 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 da. And I'm gonna screw my screen so I will take it out because I'm so lazy, yeah, yeah. If there's something really stuck on the inside, you can just like cheat. Look, we're just like reach, it's the reach around. <laughs> and like, yep, no need to take it out and scrub it. Just reach around and pop it back. Get in there, friend. <clears throat> pop it like butter, like nothing. Like nobody cares. Like it's easy. Like it's easy. Oh, it's so easy to pop your screen back in. Okay. Oh, I'm out of shape. Cleaning blinds are honestly kind of a pain. And I've tried gadgets. I've tried the little fancy things and tongs and none of it really works. The fastest way to do it is to close the blinds and use a duster or even a sock and just knock the dust down. Honestly, this really does work. You don't want to go in with anything wet before you've dry dust because just like baseboards, it's going to become a gross clumpy mess of nastiness and then once you've dusted them if they're not like visibly gooey leave it but if you see like goo and visible things okay wet rag a little bit of vinegar and water and dish soap and if it's mini blinds especially make sure that you put your hand behind it so that you don't break the blinds to hold pressure and then just wipe straight down When I was a kid, I had to take down all the blinds and soak them in a bathtub. Why? Why would you do that? Don't do that. Da, 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 da. Please, please don't wash your curtains. It, not only does it take a ton of time, my mother-in-law once was doing me a favor while I was on vacation and washed all my curtains, except all the hems came out and they were really, really wrinkled and some of them shrunk. So it kind of ruined my curtains. It's unnecessary. 
To clean your curtains, all you have to do is use a sticky roller because they just get dusty, right? So you just run the sticky roller over them, especially at the top, and that's it. That's how you clean curtains in seconds. No more washing, no more ruining. It's all about time saving. A sticky roller is also how you clean your lampshades that get really dusty, especially at the top. Just run that sticky roller over them, get all the dust and the dog hair and everything else off of them in seconds. Sticky roller, sticky roller, sticky roller, dust and dog hair and cobwebs, sticky roller. If you're a glutton for punishment, there's a few other areas that I focus on when I spring clean that you probably don't think about as normal. And one of those is the table, chairs, and legs, because these not only get really, really dusty, but they're often like splattered in food and juice and other things. So give these a quick wipe and make sure you focus on light switches. These are also a really neglected space that can make your whole house feel kind of grungy. I also love focusing on door handles and and doors and jams, especially lower on doors where my dog like puts her nose to open them. These are always covered in goo. And last but not least, the front of kitchen cabinets. Cleaning these will make your entire kitchen feel brighter and cleaner. I made you a spring cleaning checklist and I actually broke it down into one small task a day. So in one month, you can have your entire house deep cleaned in only 15 minutes a day. I'm gonna put a link to this and another spring cleaning checklist in the description below if you wanna follow along. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're feeling motivated to scrub something today and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Do you know what's ironic, but not actually ironic, because that's not the right word to describe it? Every time I clean my outdoor windows, it rains. It's a thunderstorm right now. All my streak-free, beautiful windows are now covered in rain. But let's talk about some other crazy ironic things. It's a free ride when you've already paid. It's the good advice that you just didn't take. And who would have thought it figured? quoting that Alanis Morissette song that I think is called ironic, but apparently none of that is actually ironic. I don't know what the real definition of ironic is, but I'd love to know in the comments below if like you can relate to this. Every time I wash my car, I immediately like drive through a puddle or it starts to rain. It's just like life. It's life. I'd love to hear your stories in the comments below and what this is actually called because it's not called irony. Coincidence? I don't think that's the word. I'll see you guys next time. What is it called? Irony is something else. What is irony? Alexa, what's the definition of irony? As a noun, irony is usually defined as the use of words to convey a meaning that is the opposite of its literal meaning. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for irony. Did that answer your question? Not really. Alexa, Give me an example of irony. Thanks for your feedback. Is that ironic? No. I really got to look up an example of irony, though. This is going to bother me. Example of irony. If it was a cold, rainy day, you might say, what a beautiful day. That's irony? Saying the opposite of what's true? Penny, you're a genius. I thought that was sarcasm. My brain is starting to hurt. Wait a minute. If you're having a bad day, oh, you have food poisoning, you say, wow, I feel great today. No, that's sarcasm. That's not irony. I give up. Someone explain it to me in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.